Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is the end of my fifth week of teaching on humility, and I'm going to finish up next week. So we're going to go into a sixth week on this. I tell you, the Bible has a lot to say about humble, uh, humbling ourselves before the Lord or humility. Before honor is humility. And the main scriptures that I've been using is James chapter 4, that God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. I tell you, this is a vitally important subject and sad to say you aren't going to hear much teaching on humility. And the teaching you do hear sometimes is wrong. I think that the church has taught that humility is having low self-esteem and beating yourself down and, and being condemned and inferior minded. And that is not an accurate representation at all. What I've been talking about for the last week is Proverbs chapter 13, verse 10, where it says, only by pride cometh contention. And that just sounds totally wrong to people. People think, no, it's what that person did that makes me angry. No, it's not what's done to you that makes you angry. It's what's inside of you that makes you angry. It's the way you respond. You know, you can see this in Jesus. Jesus was being crucified. He was mocked. He had his beard plucked out. He was beaten. He had a crown of thorns put on. They mocked him and said, if you're the Christ, come down. I mean, every button that you could possibly push in a person was pushed in Jesus. And yet Jesus turned around and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Instead of responding in anger, I tell you, Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. If he had just operated in anger and given people what they deserved, he could have destroyed the entire human race, the planet. I mean, he could have released his power. He could have killed all of those people who were mocking him and doing these things to him. And instead, he prayed for them. And some people think, well, that was Jesus and I'm not Jesus. Well, that's really not a good excuse. The truth is we have the Spirit of Christ on the inside of us. If you've been born again, you are a new creature and you have His life on the inside of you and we can act like Him. Jesus Himself said in John chapter 14, verse 12, Verily, verily, that means truly, truly. And the reason He had to start it with those two words, truly, truly, was because this is nearly too good to believe. Who could believe that this could happen? But he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. It's a cop-out. It's an excuse to say, Well, I'm not like Jesus. I can't act like Him. We can act like Him. We have His life on the inside of us. But even putting all of those things aside, which I believe that with my whole heart, you can look in the seventh chapter of the book of Acts, and you can find Stephen, the very first Christian who was martyred after the resurrection of Jesus. He was stoned to death, and as he was stoned to death, he said, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. So here is a physical man, just like you and me, with a fallen nature who had gotten born again, and he was able to think of other people and pray for the people who were stoning him to death. You can live this way. You can overcome anger and strife. It's only through pride what's on the inside of you that causes you to respond in anger. And if you deal with yourself and if you deal with this pride, then you can overcome anger in your life. You do not have to be a bitter, angry person. You do not have to have unforgiveness in your life, regardless of what people do. Some people are praying that God will just touch everybody out there so that they don't have to have any unforgiveness because nobody's ever doing them wrong. That's never going to happen. You're always going to be abused. Something's going to happen. Something will happen. As a self-centered person is like having an addiction to dope. People that are addicted to dope, you know, they never get satisfied with the same amount that they had before. They have to keep increasing it. It has to be higher and higher dosage. It's an addiction. It is impossible to satisfy. It's impossible to satisfy self. There are some of you that live in a home that is infinitely better than your parents or grandparents. You have nicer cars. You have nicer things. You have all of this stuff. And you know what? You thought if I could just have a little bit more than this and you've got, now you've got all of these things and you still aren't satisfied. There are some of you that are multimillionaires. There are some of you that are very, very famous. 
There are some of you that have everything going for you and you still aren't satisfied because it's all about self. Self is like a dope addiction. Whatever you get, you got to get more. It's impossible to satisfy self. The only thing you can do to self is deny it. And you have to put down yourself and exalt others and live for God and other people more than you live for yourself. And only then will you ever be truly satisfied. I was using scriptures yesterday and I used this example of talking to Jim Irwin, the man who landed on the moon. And he told me that when they threw the capsule towards the moon, it didn't go there perfectly. They had a course correction every 10 minutes and the capsule actually went to the moon like this and yet they made it. And the Lord spoke to me and said that this is the way it is in dealing with self. You don't just deal with self one time and you nail it and then you never have a problem with self again. That's not the way that it works. I've had people come up to me after I teach on this humility and talk about humbling yourself and exalting God and other people. And I've had people come and say, would you please just cast self out of me? I've had people ask for prayer that I could cast self out of them. You can't do that. The only way you can be delivered of self is for me to kill you. And then you go to be with the Lord and you'll have a glorified self. You won't have this uh, tendency with the flesh anymore. And then everything's going to be perfect. But short of killing you, I can't get you rid of self. As long as you are breathing, you have this tendency to just exalt and promote yourself. And so it's not something that you just deal with one time and it's over. It's just like going to the moon. It was a course correction every 10 minutes. You know, I had the Lord show up and I made a decision to put, to live for God and give Him everything I've got, March the 23rd, 1968. But since then, I've had millions of course corrections where I recognize, and I don't even do it intentionally. It's just, it seems like it's nearly a default thing that you just start thinking only about yourself and you forget about other people and where they're coming from and all this kind of stuff. And I, there's times that I've realized this and when I realize it, I don't sit there and say, oh God, I failed in my commitment. No, Mike, I'm committed to putting God first and other people ahead of myself. That is my absolute commitment. But do I keep it all the time? No, I constantly fall short just because I'm human, just because I have flesh. And when I find myself short, I don't go back and start over again. I just make a course correction. Just like I was talking about that Apollo capsule. You know, just because they were off course didn't mean that they aborted the whole mission and then start over and try and do it again. No, they just made a course correction and they kept correcting until they eventually got there. You know what? Nobody is ever going to live perfectly humble. But you can head in that direction. You can blast off and go that direction. Just going back to this Apollo mission, you know, you have to make course corrections, but there is a place where you blast off. There's a lot of people, there's many people watching this program that you have been so influenced by the world and just our carnal flesh that self is absolutely in control. It's all about you. You love yourself infinitely more than you love God or anybody else. And this is just so radically different than anything that you've ever heard that you know what? You've never even blasted off. You've never even humbled yourself. You've never even begun the process. You have thought that it's everybody else that's the problem. You are mad at everybody else. Sometimes even God, God is, God, why haven't you done this and that? and you haven't recognized it at yourself. There's some of you that this is a brand new revelation to you. And you know what? You need to blast off. You need to move in that direction. But I'm telling you, it's a process. And if you were to respond to this television program perfectly today, if the Holy Spirit touches you right where you are, and you were to just, you know, drop to your knees and, oh God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I have exalted myself and I've been blaming other people and using this as an excuse and it's just me. And if you humbled yourself today, it's not going to be a perfect thing that you'll never have another problem with self. You'll have to continue this again tomorrow. You know, in my meetings, I often minister on this and then I'll have people pray and we'll, I'll lead them in a prayer where they just humble themselves and put God and other people first. And then after I pray, I'll say, you know what? You're going to need a course correction every 10 minutes for the rest of your life. 
and I'll tell them that somebody will want to go back there and get this book and the last book, somebody else will take it and you've got an opportunity right there to say, well, you know what? You go first. I can get it online or whatever. There's going to be some of you that pull out into the parking lot and somebody's going to pull in front of you and there's going to be an opportunity for you to sit there and think, well, what about me? They took this place. I should have been there. This person promoted themselves and it's an opportunity for you to humble yourself. And you're just going to have things like this happen to you the rest of your life. It doesn't mean that you didn't truly make a commitment. It just means that it's a process. You know, if the Lord would have shown me everything that I needed to deal with in my entire life, all of my wrong attitudes and everything, if He had shown me every single thing, March the 23rd, 1968, when I had this encounter with the Lord, it would have overwhelmed me. I don't know that I could have overcome it. I would have been so overwhelmed with my with how messed up I am and how many problems I've got. But praise God, He just shows things to me one step at a time. And it's going to be the same with you. God will show you things, but you have to make this commitment. Let me go back to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. These are the scriptures that the Lord used to change my life. They're the very first scriptures that ever just came alive. You know, Hebrews chapter Four, verse 12 says, The Word of God is quick. That means alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And the Word, the first scriptures that ever just came alive and transformed my life is Romans 12, 1 and 2. And Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That verse says we are supposed to be a living sacrifice. And it says this is our reasonable service. Some people think, well, only you preachers are supposed to be total sacrifices. You know, all of us laity, we just commit to God much less than you do. But that's your vocation. This is what you do for a living. You give yourself totally to God. No, every person is supposed to be given totally to God. And some people he may put into the ministry. Some people he may make... Uh, business people, other people. You're a, you're a mother. You're training up your children. You're a wife to your husband. Man, that's a powerful job. That's an awesome thing to do. We all have different callings, but every one of us, I don't care whether you consider yourself a full-time Christian or not, you are supposed to be a living sacrifice. That's just our reasonable service. One translation says our normal Christian duty. This isn't for the super saint. This is for the Jane Doe and John Doe Christian. You're just supposed to be totally committed to God. And notice it says that you're a living sacrifice. You know, that means many things, but one of the things that that means is that you don't just crawl up on the altar one time and die and you sacrifice yourself to God and it's over. It's a living sacrifice. It is a continual thing. You know, it's, it, a lot of people make mistake dieting because they will go on these radical, extreme diets. They will punish themselves, deny themselves, but they only do it for a brief period of time. And then when the diet is over, boom, they're right back to where they were and their body reacts to that and they actually gain more weight than they had. True, a person that's going to really control their weight is a person that just for the rest of your life, not just for a day or a week or a month or whatever, but for the rest of your life, you're going to eat right. You're going to exercise right. And that's the way that you really do it. Likewise, you don't need to just make a sacrifice and come to the Lord and come to grips with self one time. It needs to be a living sacrifice, something that you live the rest of your life that you keep this attitude. And there will be times that you're more focused on it than at others. There will be times that because of the weakness of our flesh, we falter and we fail and we aren't as committed to God as we should be. But it needs to be a living sacrifice. And the problem with a living sacrifice is it keeps crawling off the altar. You got to keep this sacrifice. It has to be a commitment that you make constantly. You know, again, going back to March the 23rd, 1968, that has now been 48 years ago that I made this commitment to God and I blasted off and I headed in this direction. But did you know, as I've been teaching on humility, I have gone back over this and man, I have 
renewed myself. I'm not rededicating myself. If you truly are dedicated, you can't rededicate it. There is no such word as rededicate. If it's dedicated, it's dedicated. If it's committed, it's committed. But I fail in my dedication. I fail in my commitment. I am not perfect. And it has inspired me and motivated me all over again, going back through this teaching and sharing it with you on television. It's ministered to me. And here I am 48 years down the road from when I began this process. And you know what? I'm still making course corrections and I'm still having to do things. I've never done it perfectly. I've never done anything perfectly in my life. But I can truthfully say that it has been my number one goal and commitment to love God and other people and fulfill God's purpose for my life ahead of everything else. That has been my number one goal, my commitment for 48 years. I haven't done it perfectly. I've failed. I'm still failing. But you know what? I'm doing it better than I've done. I'm getting better. The course corrections are less. I'm getting closer. But as long as I'm breathing and in this body, I expect to still have to be dealing with self. And I'm saying all of these things for your benefit. That hopefully many of you have been touched through this teaching on humility. And you've recognized that, man, you have used excuses about this is your personality type. This is just the way your family is. You've, you've said it's their fault and I'm this way and all of these things. Hopefully there's many of you recognizing, no, it's not any of these external things. It's pride in us that causes us all of this grief. All of our sorrows are basically caused by our own self-centeredness. And hopefully many of you are recognizing that. And if you respond and receive these teachings and humble yourself before God, regardless of what type of encounter you have with the Lord right now, it's not going to be just a one-time deal. You are going to have to walk this out. It needs to be something that you need to change. And it's not easy to change things that have been in your life for decades. I'm not trying to discourage you. What I'm trying to do is encourage you that if you make this commitment with your whole heart, you'll find out that there are times that you fail in this. And it doesn't mean that it wasn't your commitment. It just means that you're still human, that you still have flesh, that you have to renew your mind. Matter of fact, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, that verse that I quoted about being a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable service. Then verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 1 talks about being a living sacrifice, but then 12, 2 talks about renewing your mind. It's a process. You make the commitment, you blast off, you head in this direction, but then you need to renew your mind constantly. And notice that the last part of that verse 2 says, you will prove the good, then the acceptable, and then the perfect will of God. There's steps, there's stages, there's growth. You don't just go from zero miles an hour to a thousand miles an hour all at once. That's not acceleration, that's a wreck. If you went from zero to a thousand all at once, it'd kill you. You know what? You have to accelerate and you start off slower at the beginning and you pick up speed. Likewise, in the Christian life, you make a commitment that, God, I want you to be first in my life. I want to humble myself. I want it to not be all about me. I want to love you and your purpose for my life and other people more than I love myself. I want to lay my life down for you and for other people. You make that commitment, but you know what? You start off slow. And as you continue, and you just continue to make these course corrections, every time God shows you, hey, you know, this is, vi this is violating your commitment that you made. This is contrary to what you said. Here you are exalting yourself. You're getting into anger again. You're criticizing, judging this person again. He'll show you, and you humble yourself, and you just go back and say, Father, I'm sorry. I really meant what I said. I'm sorry I got off track. And you do that. You'll start off, and it'll, it may be huge corrections in the beginning. But as you continue down this road, it'll get less and less. You'll get closer and closer. But it's a process. You never arrive. You just leave. But I am convinced that there are some people watching this program that you've never left. You have just followed the way that the rest of the world, the way that your parents, the way that everybody else around you is, and it's just all about you. 
Man, you think only about yourself. You are just all wrapped up in yourself and you make a very small package. You know, if that's you and if you have never even, if this is a revelation brand new to you and you've never started down this road, I just want to pray with you today and help you to make this commitment. I'm going to pray and say some things that are things that are, I said when the Lord touched me 48 years ago. And you need to internalize this, make it personal, make it yourself. But you need to just come before the Lord. And like Romans 12, 1 says, say something like, Father, I'm presenting myself to you as a living sacrifice. I'm call, crawling up on the altar. I can't, I can't overcome self on my own. I need the fire of God to fall on this sacrifice and consume it. So I just lay myself out before you. And I'm asking you, Father, to come and consume me, to consume this self. Get me to where I love you, for, first, uh, first of all, foremost, above anything else. And then to where I love your people. And I love other people more than I love myself. That I love fulfilling your will and not doing my will. Father, I just die to myself. And I put you first. And I want your will in my life. And you begin to start praying like that and just turning yourself over. And the Holy Spirit, if you will allow Him, will come in and He will energize your prayer. He will help you. You know, it's kind of like if you were standing in a mud puddle and you tried to clean off your feet. Did you know you could clean off one foot by standing there on just one foot? But then when you get one foot clean, you'd have to put that foot back down in the mud to clean off the other one. You just can't do it on your own. You have to have someone lift you out of that, put you in a position to where, you know, you can clean off your feet. Likewise, you just can't die to yourself on your own. You have to start the process. You have to start praying. Tell the Lord it's your desire. And then the Holy Spirit has to come and lift you out of this and get you lift you up to a higher realm to where you can live for God and other people more than you live for yourself. This is not just difficult. It's impossible. It's impossible in the natural for you to live a life that is humble where God and other people are ahead of yourself. You need the quickening power of the Holy Spirit. And so I encourage you today to start praying similar to some of the things that I've said. Ask for the Holy Spirit just to come in and touch your life. And you know, if there's any of you that don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which includes many things, but it includes speaking in tongues, we have people on our phones that would be glad to pray with you. And all of them have this baptism of the Holy Spirit. All of them have begun this process that I've been talking about, about humility. None of us have arrived, but we would love to pray with you. So please call the number that you see on your screen. And also, request the materials that we're offering. This teaching on humility is brand new. I've never offered it on television before. I know it would be a blessing to you. So listen to our announcer, and then please call or write today. Receive the materials. Also, ask people to pray with you, and they would be glad to pray with you and help you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in this gift of speaking in tongues. <music> 